I know exactly which button to press on my microwave to heat up my food, but if it breaks, I wouldn't be able to fix it. So the same goes for programming. So have you ever wondered how some people seem to always know how to fix the code, where to find the relevant information, and how to best implement new features? They don't actually know everything. They just understand the key concepts and principles that allow them to navigate any piece of code they encounter. And after countless hours of going through the Next.js documentation, I've condensed the entire framework into 10 core concepts. And by the end of this video, I'm fairly confident that you too will be able to understand any Next.js code you encounter. The first concept is not often talked about, but it's actually a key to understand what Next.js is and what you can build with it. So there is a misconception that Next.js is only for building APIs, but in fact, there are three types of applications you can build with Nest. You can create a HTTP server using the Nest Factory Create and request endpoints and effectively create APIs and web servers. But you can also create microservices applications using Nest Factory Create Microservice. And microservices are very similar to HTTP servers, except that they can use different transport protocol such as TCP or NAT, and they can communicate via internal, an internal network. And last but not least, you can also create standalone applications using Nest Factory Create Application Context. And a standalone application is just an application that doesn't have network listener. So they are great for creating scheduled tasks or creating CLI tools even if you want. But they all have one thing in common. They need a root module. So let's talk about modules now. Modules are the building blocks of a Nest application. So you can picture a Nest app as a graph made of modules. And at the top, you always have a root module. And that root module can use other modules. And those modules can themselves use other modules and so on. For example, you could have an application with a product module, an order module that uses a cart and payment module. And they could all be using a shared configuration module. In terms of the implementation, a module is a class that is annotated with a module decorator. And you absolutely need to understand the concept of decorators because they are everywhere in Nest.js. Decorators can be a bit strange to start with, but once you understand what they are, it all clicks and you can do really powerful things. So a decorator is a special kind of function and it can be attached to methods, classes, properties, and it modifies their behavior and it can even add metadata. Think of decorators as wearing accessories or suits that give you extra power. For example, you can take an empty naked class and dress it with a fancy shiny module decorator suit. And that means that it can be used by other classes that are wearing the same shiny module decorator suit. To create the application module graph, you define relationship between modules by passing an object property to the module decorators. And you define the related modules in the imports property. And once you have modules, you can add controllers inside them. Controllers are classes that are annotated with the controller decorator. So let's say that they are wearing a blue jacket. So a controller is simply in charge of receiving incoming requests and returning a response. So you can define a root path in the controller decorator and you add methods to handle the incoming request. And those methods can be annotated with a HTTP, a HTTP verb, and those decorators can take a subroot as parameter. So the main role of the controller is to receive requests and return response. Anything else is delegated to other classes. Most of the code that you will be writing in Nest is within providers. So a provider is simply a class that can be injected in other classes as dependency. So let's take a user service class as an example. So you annotate that class with the injectable decorator to indicate that it's a provider. Then you declare it as a provider in the user's module. And now you can inject it in the controller via the constructor. So you can think of providers as freelance workers and Nest.js is an agency that places those freelance workers wherever they are needed. And congratulations, you've used dependency injection and the singleton pattern. Now, let me show you how to take full control of the request handling flow, starting with middlewares. 
when you want to take a plane, you don't just park on the tarmac and enter the plane. So you have to go to check in your luggage, then you go through security, then you might even go through border control, then you show your boarding pass, and finally you get on the plane. So just like a plane passenger, you can make a request go through several stages before it's handed over to the method handler. So for example, you could use middleware to log every incoming request, but don't start adding middlewares everywhere because I'll show you in the next concept that Nest comes with built-in features for common request flow management. Guards are a critical part of the request lifecycle in Nest.js. So they work more or less like security check at an airport and their primary purpose is to determine whether the request will be handled by the root handler based on specific conditions like roles, permissions, or any custom logic. So they have access to the execution context and that allows them to inspect some details about the request. For example, an authentication guard can check if the user is authenticated and authorized to access a requested resource. And if the guard returns true, then the request passes through. And if it returns false, then the request is denied and we send an error response to the client, for example. After the guard, you can add interceptors to your application. So they run before and after the root handler. So they give you full control over the request response cycle. So interceptors implement the Nest interceptor interface and they can perform tasks like logging or caching. For example, an interceptor can log request details or map the response and input data format. The next stop before getting to the handler is pipes. So that's where you can validate and transform the data that is handed to the handler to ensure that it meets certain criteria or is in the correct format. So pipes are classes that implement the pipe transform interface and they are annotated with the injectable decorator. So for instance, a pipe can validate the data sent in a request to ensure that it conforms with the expected format or the expected type or certain constraints. It's up to you to implement whatever validation rules you want. But if the data is invalid, then the pipe can throw an exception preventing the root handler from executing. Additionally, pipes can transform the data into a more suitable format for processing. For example, a pipe can convert a string input into integer or parse dates from string representations. So built-in pipes like validation pipe, parsing pipe and parse UUID offer some common validation and transformation, but you can also create custom pipes to handle specific requirements. If at any point during the request handling, there is an unhandled error, Nest.js would return a 500 internal error by default, but you can manually throw standard HTTP exceptions as well and be a bit more descriptive. And you can even customize error handling through exception filters. Exception filters are classes that implement the exception filter interface, and they are decorated with the catch decorator. They can catch exceptions thrown by any part of the request handling process, including guards, interceptors, pipes, or root handlers, of course. But when an exception is caught, the filter determines how to handle it and what response to send. For example, you can have like a global exception filter that can catch all exceptions, log the error details, and return a standard error response to the client. So this ensures that the client receives consistent error messages and that sensitive information is not exposed and that will make front-end developers very happy as well. So exception filters provide a centralized way of handling errors and maintain the stability and security of your application. Everything that I've just shown you needs to be applied if you want these concepts to stick. You can watch this next video and apply those concepts and you can follow along as I build a podcast API from scratch. And in that video, I'll also show you how to test your app.